Don't hit it, 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 don't hit it. Oh, I'm gonna hit it. Oh! Okay, here we go. So, once upon a time, the Canon Science Research Group was going to jump to the Cone Sector to do some exploration in science. The Cone Sector has long been theorized to be the home sector of the Thargoids. But I'm not looking for Thargoids, I'm looking for Raxla. The Thargoids stopped the mission to the Cone Sector because FDev were little bitches about it, but we're gonna see if we can't sneak into the Cone Sector, try to find some system we can jump to, to maybe shed some light on this Raxlin Thargoidian mystery, eh? You see right in front of me there's Bernard's Loop and all that, but um, we're not going there. But we are nearby, you know, relatively speaking. We are in this system, Autots, whatever. And if you know anything about Autots, a lot of it is near uh, the Cone Sector. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, right here, one jump away, is a permit locked sector known as the Cone Sector. It isn't just systems of the Cone Sector in the name, as you can see. FDev used the pretty wide brush to totally block off anything anywhere near the cone sector. Well, we can still reach the Seagull Nebula somehow. There, there's the cone nebula right there, boys. A place no Elite Dangerous Commander has ever flown, because it's all permit locked to hell. I wonder how FDev uh, permit locked these. Do they go one by one, or uh, do they just take a big spherical tool and tell it to block all systems in the area? If they did the latter, then um, we're screwed. But if they did the former, if they went one by one and uh, permit locked these, they may have missed one or two. We're gonna go around this bad boy. First things first, what the hell is this? Why do I have it bookmarked and what the hell is it? I discovered this. What? When did I discover this and why? What's the name of the bookmark? Oh, this is Lurid Hills. You guys remember Lurid Hills? Thor's helmet. Thor! We're gonna go to Thor's helmet. We're gonna do a wide loop around the cone sector here. Is Raxla around the cone sector? In the cone sector? Or beyond it? I guess we're gonna have to find out, boys. I should just email FDAB and be like, Hey, I'm doing a video. Let me in the cone sector. Okay, we're actually going to have to swing by the Lurid Hills first and go the long way around because the plotting route can't plot us to Thor's helmet through the cone sector or around it. The computer gets too confused. So, here we go. Here we go back to the Lurid Hills. Ooh, a blue-white star is on the way, huh? Question always is... Will you recognize Raxla when you see it? Only landable body in this entire system. We're not gonna know if this is Raxla or not unless we check it out. Now, let's see how big of a boy we're dealing with here. It is smaller than Earth, significantly. We're not getting any hits. It sure is a moon. Are we getting any hits of uh, signals on the surface? Nothing. This is so mundane it's suspicious. Wow, look up. Oh my god, the contrast. You guys seeing this contrast? It's like a sea of molten silver that got frozen in place. There's the star up there. There's like slight violet hues to the mountains. God, this whole place feels so alien. That was weird. It's like I was surfing on the surface. All right, I saw the blue. Come on. Oh, stuff your low gravity warning. I'm gonna certify this place Raxla free. Goodbye, moon. And moon's planet. Wait. These are some gas giants. Let's count the moons. It has eight, and this has eight, right? I don't think it says a gas giant with eight moons. I think it says the eighth moon of a gas giant. I guess we better go make sure the dark wheel isn't hiding around there. Oh, for those of you who don't know, the dark wheel is a shady organization that's searching for Raxla as well. And they have a staging post or home base or something that's called the dark wheel. A wheel-shaped station that sits dark and hidden that orbits the eighth moon of a gas giant. So if you ever see me counting the number of moons on a gas giant, that's why. Whenever I see an eighth moon, you know, we have to go check it out, make sure the dark wheel isn't hiding around there. It could be, we could totally miss them, because again, they're sitting dark. I see no flicker of a station. I don't know how I'd find it. <laughs> okay, no sign of the dark wheel here. All right, I've made it all the way back here to Lurid Hills. Place I visited in a previous video with stunning orange hills, but, and it's a big but, I never fully scanned the system, so now I have. And look what I found here. Many landable worlds and planets. These all look interesting. There's geological activity on these planets. Who knows what's on these planets? And looky here, there's a gas giant with actually nine moons. So, we have to go check out the eighth one, right? Gosh, some of these moons look dope. Look at this. So we're gonna go scan and map all of these bad boys and see if we can't find Raxla. 
I see all those other Elite Dangerous explorers, you know, Twitch streamers, YouTubers and the like, all having their mathematic equations and their their ideas and philosophies and stuff, and you know, it never works out for them. My random haphazard stumbling is just as good of a way of finding Raxla as their, uh, I don't know, number crunching crap. Mostly because Raxla probably doesn't exist. We're gonna still find it, even if we have to define it ourselves. Which gets me thinking, maybe, uh, FDev wants the player base to decide what Raxla is. Come here, you Neptonian gas giant bitch. 22 probes! Ah. I remember how much I love scanning gas giants. Ooh, look at this red and green duo over here. All right, let's see which one of you guys has features. You have two geological, you're 22 geological. Aren't you smaller though? Yeah, site 22, let's go for it. Let's figure out what kind of crap is going on around here. I doubt Raxla will show up as a geo signal though, to be honest with you. But during Distant Worlds 2, I was technically a geologist. It was like fire coming out of these pits. Breathing fire. This is a good boy. Now this is where you go camping, boys. This puts the camp in base camp. Yeah, I bet y'all want to go out here and explore now, don't you? Geosite 22, guys, right here on this moon. Come check it out. Plenty of campfires to go around. If you want to know what happens when you climb into one of those things, um, look at my Distance World 2 videos. I'll give you a hint. It's not surprising. Oh, well, there's no Raxla here. Let's go orbit this uh, eighth moon real quick, see if we see any hints of a stache. Nope. <laughs> Let's go to Geosignal 2. Weird, these craters look more like acid droplets on the surface. Ugh. Ugh. What did I say earlier about drops of acid? Sulfur dioxide from oil. Alright. Let's see if anything happens to my shield or my hull when I drive over this. Just trying to toke up. Was up, bruh? Was up, bruh? I don't know what potheads say when they're smoking pot. Uh, oh, we're still good. We're still good. Dude, it expands the mind, bruh. It treats your anxiety, brother. Turns you into a whole different person around here. Sulfur dioxide firm oils, bruh. Ever tried Kratom, bruh? Well, maybe this is the way to find Raxla. Getting really, really high. We might have stumbled on somebody's plantation here, bruh. They might come out with some Mac 10s and just start shooting at us. Oh, that's right. I was gonna start naming planets and stuff after after my um, patrons. All right, which one of y'all wants this one? <laughs> which one of y'all wants uh, this planet eight here? Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, gee! Let's leave this place before uh, Brub becomes part of my vernacular. All right, this planet, this this moon here, is definitely going to Dafted One Two Four. Okay, Dafted One Two Four. This moon's for you. Yeah, this moon, moon eight, right here, right here, in this system. NGC 2546 sector VX WC 16 9. I discovered this one for you, buddy. Who wants that volcanic one? Blood Butcher. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting this one, buddy. You're getting the fire world. And who's getting the gas giant? You know what? Homebound Carrot was one of my patrons for a while. He isn't anymore. But uh, you don't have to be my patron forever. <laughs> You're my patron for a while, so I'm gonna name this one after you. This is Homebound Carrots Planet. Look at this. I mean, look at this. You get a glowing field of magma plumes just outside the ring system of a gas giant. That's pretty dope. Let's actually look at what it says about this world. If it had more sunlight, it'd be a bright um, orange. It's kind of cool. It has arsenic. Eh. Arsenic. Does it have any old lace? Who should get this one? Joe Osborne. Joe Osborne, you get this whole miniature system right here. This gas giant, the rings, and this planetoid. This is your this is your zone. But I imagine your base camp would probably be where you can land. Interestingly, this other gas giant in the system has water-based life. If you could believe it. Water-based life. Crazy. Looky what I found, boys. An Earth-like world with a ring system. Yeah, boy. This is certainly not my first Earth-like world that I've discovered, but uh, it's always still nice to find one. This might be my first one discovered with a ring system, though. Platinum. Yeah, platinum rings. This Earth-like world orbits a gas giant, which in turn orbits a Class A star that someone else discovered. But that guy never took the time to look at what was in the system. Or else he certainly would have, you know, got credit for discovery in this. But he never even saw it. Alright, I think I know it, and I'm gonna name this uh, Earth-like world after one of my uh, patrons. I discovered this Earth-like world, so I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna name it Glintwine. 
Lintwine has been my longest running Patreon subscriber, so he gets the Earth like world, boys. But the downside is he could never come here and land on it to visit it unless they added, you know, atmospheric landings or something. He can visit the ring system, though, if he has his own ship that can get this far out. I don't see any Raxless hide in here, though, so don't hit it, 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 don't hit it. Oh, I'm gonna hit it. Oh! And look at this beautiful planet in the same system as that Earth-like world. It's an atmospheric heavy metal content world with a massive ring system and a frozen pole. And I think I'm going to name this after a patron subscriber as well. Commander Brachus Lormain. So we'll call this the Lormain planet. It even has its own mane of rings. He's my latest patron. Ah, here we are, the Seagull Nebula. Doesn't look anything like a seagull to me, but... Yeah, I mean, there's an infinite number of angles you can look at this thing. <laughs> I don't see how any of them could... It could be a seagull, unless it was a seagull that, like, hit your windshield. <laughs> oh god, it's so bright. Oh my god, it's so bright, I can't even see the hellport. I miss it, I'm burning up on that fucking star, dude. Look at this, gang. For ice meets sand, I found, like, a half ice, half rock world. And, it happens to be... I said it happens to be the eighth moon of a gas giant. Wouldn't it be funny to name a fleet carrier the Dark Wheel and like put it orbiting the eighth moon of a gas giant in the middle of nowhere? There it is, Thor's Helmet Nebula. So they set out up a research station outside of this gas giant because it has all this water-based life on it. Anyways, while I'm docked here at the Sagan station, I decided I'm going to name this black hole here that I discovered Black Hole Frio off of my first patron. Well, as expected, no matter what way I approach the cone sector from, they have it completely locked down. Top, bottom, you know, if there was a top or a bottom. Every which way, no way to snake in even somewhat close to the cone nebula. Oh well, it's time to thank all my patrons that helped make these videos possible. Don't worry if I didn't name something after you in this video. I'm just waiting for the right objects to name after you. I'll certainly name something after each one of my patrons soon. I just don't want to force it, you know? So calm down, ham-fisted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you my patrons. My first tier patrons? Thank you Slave, Blood Butcher, and Joe Osborne. Next tier up, Geist Cadets. Thank you Dafted124, Glintwine, and my latest patron, Commander Brachus Lormain. And a very big thank you to my top tier patrons, the Wing Commanders, Commander Roy Cookson, and Hamfisted. Until next time, Commanders. Commanders.